Hey everybody, Sandy here. I wanted to just make a short video for you about the coronavirus COVID-19 and how it might change how we uh, move forward with our classroom even though we are already an online classroom. For all of us who are here in town, our face-to-face -face classes are also going online. Uh, those classrooms are going to be different. So I urge you if you have face-to-face -face classroom and you are in the greater Phoenix area and you are used to going into the classroom to make sure that you check in with your uh, instructor to find out how those classrooms will change even though they are going online it is unlikely that they will go online the same way that this canvas class is online you may not know this but it takes between 40 and 80 hours to uh, put a classroom into canvas like this one and so if you're in a face-to-face -face classroom uh, it is likely that instead your faculty member will use zoom and will continue to come to you uh, in real time at the same time your regular classroom is being held except by computer uh, video conference uh, and instead of in a canvas classroom so for those of you in town who have those face-to-face -face classrooms that are being converted Please do not think that suddenly you will be able to come and go from the classroom like you do in these Canvas classrooms. Okay, so having said that, for everybody, whether you're in Phoenix or you are uh, joining us from a distance, if you uh, are in this classroom, even though the classroom itself is on Canvas, as you know, we have some assignments that ultimately uh, require have required us to go out into the community now I think we are done with most of those um, but we possibly depending on where you are in doing your paper uh, you have identified a primary research uh, opportunity for doing your paper and if you will recall the research paper required you to pull up some secondary sources which are things that have already been written about your topic that you are going to use uh, to help inform you as you write your paper and also one primary research source and that kind of primary resource could be a resource could be an interview an observation um, and let me just leave it at that because I don't need to go back through that all that information is in the area where uh, you find out about your paper. But what do you do now if you have a scheduled interview with somebody? Should you go to your interview or should you not go to your interview? Well, here is the guidance that I have read about uh, how much social distancing we should be doing. I think you will find that a lot of the organizations where you might be interviewing somebody are also closing their doors or sending people to work from home. So the first thing you will want to do is check in with your interviewee and find out whether or not they're going to be continue to be working in their in their environment or whether they're going to be going home. If they are going to be going home, then you can ask whether they can use Zoom uh, to actually do an interview or Google Hangouts or uh, Face Talk or. Uh, Facebook video camera any of the methods that you and your interviewee are comfortable doing and you can simply move your interview opportunity into a video uh, conference now let me suggest that when you do that that you not move it into a phone call there is something very different about being able to look into someone's eyes and the the ability to actually have a rich dialogue a back and forth rather than just asking a bunch of questions, taking the answers down as fast as you can, is much enhanced by a video experience. So I am requiring you to do this online. And if there is some reason why either the interviewee or yourself uh, feels like you can't, please let me know why and get some instructions from me or permission to do an alternative. But for most of you, uh, Zoom uh, or Facebook, book or whatever will work a video opportunity so please do convert those now what if you were planning what if the person says they're in their office and you are invited to go um, I think you probably 
you know, you'll have to make up your own mind. I can't tell you what to do. But again, if you have to go into an organization where a lot of people are going in and out and it doesn't feel comfortable or safe for you, just ask for them to, even though they're still in their office, uh, to let you have that video opportunity. It's probably going to be fine with them. If, on the other hand, you were just going to someone's house and meeting them one-on-one -on -one or um, something of that nature, it seems like the thing to avoid is uh, either the person who identifies as sick or crowds. If you are just meeting one-on-one -on -one with somebody and you both feel well and you haven't had any signs and nobody around you is sick, then I think you should feel free to go ahead and do that one-on-one uh, -on -one interview if you want to. Now, what if your primary research was an observation? Like you were going to go observe kids playing uh, afternoon sports or something and the volunteers that were interacting with them. I'm going to guess that that is going to be canceled and you're not going to have that opportunity. In that case, you're going to have to consider changing your primary uh, research tool. It may not be the tool, you may not end up with the tool that you wanted to end up with the most, but it should work. For example, if you were going to go do an observation of kids playing after school sports and the volunteers who are coaching them, you might make some phone calls uh, and see whether or not you could just have an interview with one of the coaches or more than one of the coaches if that's what you want to do. If you are not sure how to convert your primary research in a way that um, makes you feel like you're going to get the information you wanted, uh, please uh, send me an email or let's do let's jump on a Zoom call and let's talk it through. I want to help you with this. I'm not going to penalize anybody. Uh, so this is just uh, one of those strange times that we are living in and we're all going to have to be adaptable. So let's just find ways to adapt. And if you're not sure whether your idea for adapting is going to be okay with me, just shoot me an email or, you know, let's uh, put your question in the, in the Q and A in discussions and in case you think other people might be interested and let's just work it out together. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that that is going to be the end of it, uh, in terms of what we're required to do this, um, this semester for interacting with others. But if something else comes up and you have a question again, get back to me. Uh, last point that I want to make, um, not all of us, but most of uh, most of you are in the age range where uh, having the virus is 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 less impacting. It, it fortunately looks like uh, young people who get this virus do not end up with terrible symptoms that it doesn't seem to get too much worse than a mild flu or cold. Um, nevertheless, I want to ask you to remember that even though you may not get deathly ill, that you are contagious. And so reminding you to use all of the good um, hygiene and safety measures that are all over the news now, washing your hands frequently, using hand sanitizer if you are not somewhere where you can wash, staying out of places where you might either convey uh, the the virus or receive the virus because even if you are not that sick, um, if you are around small infants or you know babies in their first year who are more um, susceptible to problems because their immune systems aren't as built out, or your grandparents or great grandparents, if you are around them and they are very susceptible. So you want to do your best to keep yourself well, not only for the obvious reasons that you'll feel better, but also because even if it doesn't get you too down, you can give it to people who might actually be negatively impacted in a much worse way than you are. Remember, you're not just the person receiving it. You, If you happen to get it, you are also potentially the transmitter. Okay, that's it. Uh, I believe ASU has emailed everybody the website uh, if you need information about the COVID-19 virus and anything about that. Um, but if you need have questions about the class or if anything else comes up that you feel like you need to adapt because of the situation, again, please don't hesitate to get back with me. And uh, here's wishing everybody a healthy rest of the year.